Hello, everyone. Welcome. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good middle of the night. Um, we have somebody from Australia that might be watching this on a recording. I hope she's not watching it live. And it, it's so nice to have all of you here. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the music. I know we usually chat with you while you're waiting, but um, we just thought that music was just so delightful to share. I am Leslie Esslinger. Um, thank you for joining us. I know it's no easy feat to stop in the middle of the day and find time. So we really appreciate that. I'm here along with our terrific webinar team, Rob, Terry, Marilyn, and Kathy. So, um, whoops, that's what I should have just done already. Let's go right to here. Frequently asked questions. Yes, you will get a certificate of attendance. It will be sent in the mail. There will be a recording available. We will give you that link at the end of the session. Um, Kira was so generous with giving us some great free resources, um, which we'll talk more about at the end. Uh, hopefully, we'll have time for questions. Kira's uh, ready and willing to answer any questions you might have. And we will take time at the end to do a quick evaluation poll, which we always appreciate. So now it's my absolute pleasure to welcome back Kira. She made many quick fans last time she was with us to introduce her awesome collection of mindfulness moments books. She's back with new accomplishments and so much to share of her firsthand knowledge of the magic of music. She's an incredibly talented author. I hope you're not um, I'm, I hope you're not blushing here as I say all these <laughs> wonderful, true, true things about you. Oh, thank you. A uh, talented author, songwriter, performer, award-winning artist, and so much more. But instead of talking about Kira, I'd like you to spend as much time getting to know her for yourself. So I'm going to turn the mic over. And if you're more tech savvy than I am, let's give her a warm round of applause <laughs> to, <laughs> to welcome her. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. I'm so happy to be with you. And I echo what Leslie said. I know it is no small feat to give your time to anything else than all the day to day responsibilities you have. So I'm grateful for you spending some time here with me and with us. And with that said, let's just take a few deep breaths in through your nose, out through your mouth. A long breath in. Sit up tall, take a deep breath, close your eyes and be quiet. Sit up tall, take a deep breath, roll your shoulders, roll them, roll them, roll them. Sit up tall, take a deep breath, smile a little smile, and say hello. If we were in person, I'd say turn to your neighbor and say hello. We say hello. All right, Leslie, let's get this party started. This is one of my favorite things to teach early childhood educators because music is so much more than just finding a cute song that goes with your theme to play in class. If you take advantage of everything you can do with rhythm and music and song in your work with young children, it is a powerful, powerful tool in your toolbox. And I hope that I will convince you of that by the end of our time together. And it's super fun and engaging for children. Okay, so the first thing to understand, and this isn't a science lecture, believe me, this part will be quick, but it's really important to understand how music and rhythm affect our brains. So when we speak to children, and children get talked to a lot, right? They get talked at all day long. So when children are processing our speech, the part of their brain responsible for auditory processing lights up right? When children hear music, or even the most basic building block of music, which is rhythm, more parts of their brain light up, which means more oxygen is flowing to the brain, 
which means it's more focused and in an optimum primed state for learning. It's more engaged. So if you have the choice between speaking your instructions or singing them or putting them to a, a song or rhymed couplet, a beat, you will get far more engagement with the latter. Cool. Music increases brain's plasticity. What does that mean? In simple terms, it's the ability of our, our brain to, to adapt, to learn, to grow. It's really, really healthy for kids' brains to process, to work with, to create music and rhythm. And that plasticity in the brain is a positive effect that can last throughout their lives. Did you know, I bet many of you took some kind of music lessons, maybe as a child, maybe you took piano in fourth grade for eight months and then decided it wasn't for you or something. That had a powerful effect on your brain and that effect lasts to this day. Don't take my word for it. Studies show it's really, really cool the effect that working with music has on our brains. This one I love. Music makes memories more durable. What does that mean? They call it the theory of cognitive reserve. And in simple terms, it means that someone even whose brain is failing in certain ways, for example, a dementia patient cannot remember their own name. They don't recognize their family, but they can sing their wedding song, right? They remember the lyrics and the melody to songs from when they were a kid. For some reason, our brains latch onto melody and rhythm and hold them in a more durable way than other kinds of memories. So what does this mean for us when we work with young children? Well, it means that attaching information to a melody makes it so much easier to remember. Okay, and we'll get into examples of that. Finally, on music in the brain, music triggers the release of endorphins, oxytocin, and dopamine. Endorphins are like, have you ever heard of that expression, the runner's high, right? I run, I don't often get the runner's high. I guess sometimes I do, but I don't feel it like my husband does. He's like, yeah, I gotta go for a run, get that runner's high. But those endorphins, that rush of good feeling, comes from experiencing music and rhythm. Oxytocin is sometimes called the love and trust hormone. Oxytocin is that feeling when, um, you know, you go to a big concert, right? And the band plays the one hit that everybody knows the words to, and you all sing along. And of course you hold up your phone with the light and the whole thing and you're swaying side to side, right? And all of a sudden you feel like you're best friends with everybody around you. That's oxytocin. Right? Studies show that people singing together, making music together in a group, have feelings of love and trust and bonding because of that oxytocin hormone. And we'll get into ways that you can use this to unify your classroom, to bring your students together, right? To create that bonding that's so important. And dopamine, same thing, is another one of feel-good hormones, right? It's that hit that we get when lots of people like our Instagram posts, right? Dopamine is another um, hormone that music helps release that makes us feel really good. All right, let's go forward, Leslie. So let's get into how practically we can incorporate some of these things. We can use some of this knowledge to our advantage in our classrooms. So music gets kids' attention. I always tell teachers who work with, with young kids that the number one mistake you're making, it's not really a mistake, but what many teachers do, they talk too much, right? They give so many instructions. And at a certain point, kids just, just tune out. It's like Charlie Brown's teacher. They just hear wah, 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 right? When I get up in front of a huge group of kids, and I do this all the time, I do um, rock and yoga assemblies to hundreds of kids. I just did one on Friday to I think it was 350 kindergartners and first graders. And the principal or someone introduces me and then I get up in front of all the kids and they're all wiggly and squirmy. And I don't ever start by talking. They've just heard the principal talking and they heard their teachers talking and they heard their families talking and they were talking, 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 talking. I immediately start a beat, immediately. And there, like, 
ooh, what's going on here, right? I have a band with me. I have the drummer start the beat. And I play a rhythm game. Call and response, clapping. Or I do one, two, three, clap. We rub our hands together and we breathe. <sighs> or something similar. It gets their attention like that. So much more effective than talking, talking, talking. Second point on getting kids' attention. Meet kids where they are and take them where you want to go. And what I mean by this is the energy in the room. You know, you work with groups of young children. You can read the energy as soon as you come in the room or they come in the room, right? Sometimes they're bouncing off the walls. The energy is really high. It's up here. Sometimes they're tired and low energy and don't want to do anything and feel grumpy, right? So fighting against that energy isn't going to work. If I happened, this hasn't happened yet, but I happened to start an assembly with hundreds of kids and they were all really low energy, I wouldn't do the beat. I wouldn't try to start with something really upbeat. I would start with something slower and then take it where I want it to go. And I'll give you some examples of this. Finally, with getting kids' attention, one of the easiest ways to do it is with contrast. Fast and slow, high and low, right? Uh, loud and soft. Contrast is attention getting for anyone, but kids love it because the surprise of it, right, is super fun and requires them to focus. If you've ever played a super fun game of freeze dance with a bunch of young children, you know exactly what I mean, right? We're goofy, we're goofy, we're dancing, we're dancing, freeze, right? And we don't know when that freeze is gonna come and it makes us pay attention. Okay, let's go forward. Oh, great. So, Leslie, if you can play a little bit of the shimmy. So this is a super fun seated warm up, and all it is is spoken word to a beat. This is the awesome movements to it like this. Shimmy, shimmy high, shimmy, shimmy low. Shimmy, shimmy in the pot, nine days old. Shimmy, shimmy high, shimmy, shimmy low. Shimmy, shimmy in the pot, nine days old. Lift your shoulders up, drop your shoulders down. Take your shoulders in your car all around the town. Lift your shoulders up, drop your shoulders down. Take your shoulders in your car all around the town. Together, rub them really fast. Make some energy, make some energy, and breathe. And breathe. Twister, twister. Who's my little sister? All this from a sitting position. Nine days old. Twister, twister. Who's my little sister? That's my little brother. All right, that's Nine great. Days days old. Old. Yeah. So this song works really well for seated circle time, for example. No one has to stand up, you're not moving around the room, but you get a great uh, movement-oriented warm-up that rolls the shoulders, you flippy-flop your feet, you twist side to side, you clap, you take a couple of deep breaths, and you could tell children to do all of this, right? You could instruct all of this, but how much more fun and engaging is it to a beat? right? And all that is, and that's a really old song of mine. I, that's from 2005 or something. Actually, my daughter, who's now 20, is five or six years old. She's one of the kids' voices in there. And I simply put what I would say, I added some fun rhymes and things to a beat, and that's all it is, right? That's all it is. And, and kids yoga teachers all over the world use this for a warm-up because it's really easy and fun. And it's so much more engaging than speaking it. Okay, let's go forward. Let's do one more example. This is Go Plain Go. Let's see if you want to play a little bit of that. That would be great. So here's a great example of a movement song with contrast. Hop down a jet plane, you can do this sitting. Say you can go stand up and go a jet plane pose with if your you're wings wide. Right? Imagine where you want to go. go now we have contrast, fast and slow. Ready? Go! Fast. Stop. Stop. Fast. Stop. Now you 
get down your feet. Okay, so train, you would sing. Fast, I said, go train. Circle with your arms, make the train whistle. Do some fun whistle, and you'll see us go past. Or you can move around the room. You can make a train with your feeler. Go train, go. Click, clack. Great. Oh, yeah, go to All I Want to Do is Dance. That's awesome. So here's a really good example of, and I'll, I'll play this one, Leslie, um, of meeting kids' energy where it is and taking it where you want it to go. So if I walk into a room and the energy is really high and we clearly need to get our yayas out, right, I might start with something like this. All I want to do is dance. All I want to do is dance. All I want to do is dance. do is jump. All I want to do is jump. All I want to do is jump, 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 jump. And I will have them jump on one foot, on the other foot. Just keep going. Both feet keep, until they're literally <laughs> getting tired from jumping. And then we go. All I want to do is skip. All I want to do is skip. All I want to do is skip, skip. shake. All I want to do is shake. All I want to do is shake, 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 shake. Can you shake your arms? Shake, 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 shake. Can you shake your legs? Shake, 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 shake. Oh my gosh, can you shake faster? Shake, 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 shake. Freeze. Like a block of ice. But what would happen to a block of ice? In a warm room like this, it would melt. All I want to do is melt. All I want to do is melt. All I want to do is melt, 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 melt. And without even saying anything, they all melt down to the floor. I do this with hundreds of kids. Melt, 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 melt. So you see how I took the energy, super high bouncing off the walls, helped them get it out of their bodies with movement. We dance, we jump, we hop on one foot, we hop on the other foot, we skip, we shake. And then, here comes the contrast, we freeze. And now, all of a sudden, we can release and melt right down to the floor. All right, let's move forward. All I want to do... Woo! I like, thank you, that's the recorded version, there you go. So, music helps kids learn. So we talked earlier when we were, um, about music in the brain that rhythm and music light up more parts of the brain, right? So it puts the brain in an optimum state for learning. Attaching information to a melody makes it memorable. So examples of that, many of us learned the alphabet, how? With the ABC song. Let's see if I remember the ABC song. Do you guys still sing the ABC song here? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? And many children who are barely able to communicate verbally yet can sing the ABC song. That's because attaching that information to that melody sticks it in the brain in a different way. So if there's an instruction, if there's something you want children to remember, put it to a melody. Okay. Music can help teach social emotional lessons so much more effectively than talking again. And I have lots of songs, particularly on my new album, Songs for Peaceful Pandas, that have social emotional lessons. I can play you one called Strong, uh, Smart, Kind. Let's see. About kindness and affirmations, right? Just positive I am statements. Put one in on your heart. starts. Breathe in, breathe out. Put one hand on your heart. That's where kindness starts. Breathe in, breathe out. <sighs> Say, I am kind. I am kind. I choose the kindest path every time. I am kind. I am kind. I've got a great big heart. Strong. I am smart. 
one called Wise Like an Owl, which is about helping children trust their inner wisdom or intuition, whatever word you want to call it, but trust your gut essentially, right? Which is a really important thing to help our children learn to trust themselves. So music is an excellent, excellent vehicle for teaching the social emotional skills we all want our children to have. Finally, and I've said this before, sing your instructions instead of saying them. All right, let's go forward. Dance for the Sun. So you don't have to play this one, Leslie. I'll just play a little bit of it. Um, I have taught kids yoga for years and years, and I train lots and lots of kids yoga teachers. And when I was first getting started, I would teach what in yoga we call the sun salutation, which is a series of movements that is very common in yoga practice. And I would say the same things over and over again. And I said to myself, Kira, you should make this a song. And so I did. Stretch up high, wave to the sun. Hang down low, tickle your toes. Feet jump back, just like a frog. Belly on the ground, just like a snake. Look toward the sun, now down your dog. That's just a little bit of it, but kids the world over have now learned the sun salutation from my Dance for the Sun song. It's so much easier to sing it than to say it. All right, let's go forward. Just warning you, I'm going to advance it, but you will hear a quick bar of the music. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> it's embedded in the slide. It's all good. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's all, good. all right, so here's a great example of singing your instructions to, instead of saying them. So the mindfulness exercise starfish breath, which is actually in my book, Peaceful Like a Panda, and I'll show you the illustration, um, is a perfect combination of uh, my, my three M's, right, which are music, movement, and mindfulness, all incredibly powerful for children. Let me find it in my book here. And here it is. I'll have to show you the illustration. You can see that, starfish breath. So I said to myself, it's so much more engaging to add a movement to it, right? We're gonna trace our fingers and you're gonna do it with me in just a moment. But what would make it even more engaging? Put it in a song. So I wrote a song for the starfish breath exercise and it's called Peaceful and Calm. So let's listen to that now, Leslie, if we could. Kira, that, that's the one that I didn't get okay. in time no when we I'll started. It. I got it. I'll sing it. So everyone, Great. hold one hand up, spread your fingers wide, and we say, peaceful and calm, peaceful and calm. Starfish breath makes us peaceful and calm. Hold up your hand, fingers out wide. Look, it's a starfish in front of your eyes. Now put a finger here. Trace up, breathe in. Trace down, breathe out. Trace up, breathe in. Trace down, breathe out. Keep going, next finger. Trace up, breathe in. Trace down, breathe out. Trace up, breathe in. Trace down, breathe out. Trace up, breathe in. Trace down, breathe out. Peaceful and calm, peaceful and calm. Starfish breath makes us peaceful and calm. And the song goes on to do the other hand. So by the time you've been through the song, you've had your children take 10 long, deep breaths. So that song is on my new album, the recorded version, Songs for Peaceful Pandas. All right, let's go forward. So music helps kids focus. We've talked about how it increases oxygen flow to the brain, right? Creating a highly focused state. So you can work on focus with rhythm games that increase gradually in difficulty. So side note for a moment here. 
whenever I work with groups of children, if I'm, I'm doing a mindfulness presentation or I'm having an author visit or something, I often ask them, does anyone ever ask you, would you please pay attention? And they go, every, every hand goes up, yep. And I say, Do you, does anyone teach you how to pay attention? And they're like, I say, do you ever hear, will you please calm down? Every hand goes up. And I say, do you ever, does anyone ever teach you how to calm down? Or practice calming down? Or practice paying attention, right? So, you know I'm a mindfulness teacher as well, right? Focus, focusing your attention is a skill. And it needs to be practiced and taught like any other skill, like kicking up soccer ball like playing the piano so using music and rhythm can really help practice this skill and I'll give you some examples in just a minute so work on focus I read that one use listening and call and response exercises and tongue twisters so let's go forward to one of my favorite exercises and this is also in my book breathe like a bear rainstorm and we use our bodies for percussion to make the sounds of a rainstorm. I also have this on my audio mindful moments for kids CD, an audio version of me instructing this one. Let's do it all together. I can't see you, but I'm gonna know if you're really doing it with me. All right, here we go. Rub your hands together next to your ears. Shh, listen. Yep, that's the sound of the wind picking up. You hear it? Sometimes when the wind picks up, it means it's going to rain. Tap your finger and thumb together like this and listen. Yep, you hear the raindrops? If you know how to snap, you could snap. What if it starts pouring? <gasps> On your laps, go. Oh my gosh, it's pouring, it's pouring. What if it's lightning and thunder? Lightning, clap your hands. Thunder, either jump or stomp. Lightning, thunder. On your laps, go, 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 go. Oh my gosh, it's really coming down. Lightning, thunder, lightning, thunder. On your laps, go, 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 go. Faster, faster, faster. Now start to slow down a little tiny bit and bring your hands back next to your ears. Tap them together, listen. Yep, still a few raindrops. Now rub your hands together and listen to the sound of the wind. Luckily, it was a quick storm. The wind will blow the last of the storm away as it slows down and stops. Breathe in, breathe out. Kids love the rainstorm. When you do it with a large group of kids or even a classroom in a circle, you can also have them go from the raindrops to the pouring on their lap when you point to them, if you go like this and back around, and it makes the sound of the rain like going across the roof, you could change it to a snowstorm or another kind of storm. There's lots of variations you can do, but it brings kids' attention right into focus. It gets a lot of the energy and sillies out, right, when we're at the peak of it with the lightning and the thunder. And then again, it takes the energy where you want it to go because you are driving the bus, right? as to where the energy goes in the room. So let's go forward one, Leslie. The, oh yeah, this is, so this is an assembly, a good example. Everyone's doing rainstorms, so they're doing the lightning, right? And I just dis, did this on Friday with all the kindergartners and first graders, and it was a blast. A couple more focus exercises. Call and response rhythm games are amazing. So you can literally just do any rhythm and have them respond back. You can use different kinds of body percussion, not just claps, right? You can combine, lap, clap, snap, right? Stomp, all kinds of things that you can do. You can start a basic rhythm, go around the circle or around your classroom and have everyone add on a little bit so it gets more and more complicated and harder to remember, requiring focus, right? So many things you can do with rhythm. You could grab a drum. I have a little drum, I don't have it handy right this minute, but one small drum in a classroom can be useful for so many things. You can keep the beat for follow the leader, right? You can have everyone clap with you. You can use it as like a talking stick. The only person who gets to speak is the one holding the drum. You can play all kinds of games with it. 
So I highly recommend having something like that in your classroom is a get a little more of the attention than just you clapping. You have that drum, right? It gives you, you the sort of the authority as the person creating the beat in the room and really gets that engagement, that focus from the children. Another favorite way to use rhythm for focus is tongue twisters. Yes, I said tongue twisters to a beat. They're so fun. Don't knock it till you've tried it. And I'm gonna try one with you right now. Although I can't, we can't interact. I wish we were in the same room together. But this is how I do it. Again, with hundreds of kids in front of me, I have a long tongue twister. I do it to a beat and I break it up in chunks and do it as a call and response. And I'm just gonna do the whole thing for you right now so you hear it. It has a lot of T's in it that I really, you really get the kids to enunciate. And then we do it faster and faster and faster and then, particularly if it's older children, a little bit older, I'll challenge them to do it while standing on one foot, right? Or even while adding in some movement like this. Let's see if I can do it with movement. I'll, I'll do the whole thing for you, ready? It's Betty Butter. I don't know if you've ever heard this one. Betty Butter bought some butter, but she said this butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter, but a bit of better butter, that will make my batter better. <gasps> so Betty Butter bought some butter, better than the bitter butter, and she put it in her batter, and her batter was not bitter. Focus. There is no way you can be distracted, right? And do this at the same time. So of course you can use much simpler, much shorter and slower tongue twisters, but if you put them to a beat and then you gradually try to get faster and you add other layers of challenge, it's an excellent, excellent and fun way to help children practice focusing their brains. All right, let's go forward. Music provides structure. This is one of those things that helps illustrate how using music and rhythm and song go way past just like playing a neat song in your classroom, right? You can actually use music and rhythm to, to provide structure in your, in your day. Um, many children outside of their time with us don't have very structured lives, right? Some children don't have any kind of bedtime or set time that they have dinner or even a set schedule, right? It, it can often, for unfortunately for many children, things are very chaotic outside of their time at school. So the more, especially for young children, that you can provide comforting structure, right? We do this at this time and we do this and Tuesday is this day, and right? That they can count on, like it's, it's, a, it's a routine they can sort of hang their hat on. It feels very secure and safe and comforting to children. So music music can do that. It's, it's having a hello song. It's having a goodbye song. It's having a song for rest, right? It's having songs for those touchstones that you always do throughout your day, right? We always sing this song at the beginning of this. We always sing this song when we come in from recess, right? Um, and it can ease transition points so easily I always say to teacher, teachers, think about the instructions you give day after day after day. I know there's something and probably more than one thing, right? You instruct or you maybe nag or you remind, right? Day after day to do the same. Whatever that is, that needs to be a song. If you lose everybody from getting to their cubbies to getting to the rug, that needs to be a song, right? Or something that you do to a beat right? Transition from, you know, getting our backpacks to lining up at the door, whatever it is. Those transition points can be eased by bringing in music and rhythm. All right, let's go forward. So this is a good example of not only creating a touchstone in class, like for example, I would always have a rest time, right? In yoga, we call it shavasana. At the end of yoga class, you'd have a rest. But working in classrooms and in, in, in public schools, I'd also have a rest time. And I would say the same or very similar instructions every time. Also, it's a great example of singing your instructions instead of saying them. So take a few deep breaths in and out. Let your eyes close. Let your body feel heavy. Let it go. Let your eyes close, let 
your body feel heavy? Oh, let it go. Let it all go. And just breathe. Breathe. Just breathe. Just be. Just That's just a little snippet. I think you heard the recorded version of it at the beginning of our time here. And I'm also giving you a free download of that song. You can head to the Becker's page that uh, Leslie gave you the URL. You can head to my site, kirawilly.com slash magic of music and get it there too. All right, let's go forward. Ah, music can affect kids' emotional state. We all know that young children have lots of big feelings, right? Music can help us process our big feelings. Slower melodic music calms children. Faster music with strong bass empowers them. So again, figuring out what the energy is, or reading the room essentially, and choosing your music, your, your beat, your rhythm to meet the energy where it is and take it where you want to go. Music helps kids connect with their emotions and increases self-awareness. So we all know that um, when you're in a certain kind of mood, right, you're feeling sad, you're feeling heartbreak, you're feeling, you know, whatever that um, difficult emotion is. I don't know about you, but I will put on the weepiest ballad there is and just, right, have a good cry because it helps you get in touch and process those emotions that you're feeling. Kids have the same range of emotions that we do, right? The music in the classroom doesn't all have to be like in major keys and happy and sing-songy and bouncy. It doesn't. It doesn't. In fact, that song, Just Be, that I just played, you know, normally you don't hear a, a chord like this, right? It's kind of, it's A minor, for those who are wondering. Um, a melancholy chord that you wouldn't normally hear in a children's song. Kids love this song, right? It helps them get in touch with all those, all the emotions that they're feeling. And it can really help them process them, express them, go through them. So music and rhythm activities help children express themselves. My strong feeling when working with young children is the more that we can give them agency over their own choices, the better, right? You think about it, young children, they have to do a lot of things, right? They're told where to go and where to be and when we're going to eat and, blah, 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 and all that kind of stuff, right? The more that we can give them choices, the better. So when we play these rhythm games, if we can say, what rhythm do you want to come up with? Let them come up with their own rhythm. Let them come up with their own part of the song. Write a song together as a kindergarten class. It's called Kindergarten Rocks and here's our song and we wrote it together, right? Give them choices give them agency, let them express themselves. And it's a great way for you to check in on how your children are doing. If you ask someone to give, you know, come up with a rhythm and, you know, the child gives you like this crazy, right, super fast, really frantic kind of, you have a little clue about what's going on with that child right now, right? And on the other hand, if it's really slow and it's low energy and it has no, you know, right? That's another clue what's going on. It's a great way to get in touch to check in with children who may not be able to express themselves verbally very well yet on how they're doing, right? So finally, use music to reinvigorate and motivate low energy kids. Okay, we talked about taking that energy where we want it to go. All right, let's go forward. Oh, so there's a great example of me at an assembly having kids just rest and I'm sh pretty sure I was singing just be and what's amazing is that several hundred kids will lie down on a cold floor and be absolutely quiet because kids need to rest right kids are stressed out too they and they are very happy to do nothing lie down close their eyes and just breathe okay let's go forward Finally, music creates community. Music exists in every culture in the world. And as I talked about at the very beginning, singing together releases oxytocin, a 
increases feelings of trust throughout the group, right? There's actually studies that people who sing together, their collective heart rate lowers. It's actually literally good for your physical health to create music, to sing, particularly in a group. So chanting or singing is a very powerful and positive way to unite a group. So any way that you can get everyone in your class to sing something together, to chant, and chant doesn't need to be a thing. It's not like a chant. Chanting just means repeating any phrase or any word. It could be spaghetti, all right? It doesn't really matter. It just means vocalizing together. That's all it means, right? So I have a very simple chant or a mantra I call kindness mantra. That's a really simple one that I started. Yeah, and I'll just play this one too. Um, with a group of children. I can breathe in. as a call and response. You certainly don't need a guitar to do this one. You can sing it on your own. And I have children just repeat it right after me, right? version of that one's available too. All right, let's go forward. I think, oh yes, my favorite, my favorite, favorite. So I encourage you, yes you can, I hear you going, I'm not a musician, I'm not a singer, doesn't matter, and you know just as well as I do that the children don't care, right? They're not gonna be like, I think you're a little bit flat. No, they're not gonna do that. <laughs> so I encourage you, to create as many songs, rhythm games, rhymed couplets, spoken word to a beat as you can. It will make your lessons so much more engaging and fun. So, okay, a few tips if you're gonna do and you are, write something for your work with children. Keep it simple, keep it repetitive. What might seem repetitive to me and you, you know this when working with young children, repetition is good, right? It's a good thing. Fours and eights. So in, in the Western world, the most common format of music is it's organized into fours and eights. One, two, three, four. Mary had a little lamb, her fleece was white as snow, right? So that's eight. Uh, Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb, her fleece was white as snow, right? Four fours. So when you're creating something, see if you can count it out, and if it feels a little funny or off, it might not be fitting into those neat um, sort of packages of four, eight, 16, 32. Now, of course, especially if there are musicians out there, you know there are many other time signatures. There are things that are waltzy like one, two, three, one, two, three, right? But the most common um, way that we hear music structured and why it feels really good in our bodies and in kids' bodies is in that four, right? So think of it that way. Use musical, lyrical, or rhythmic hooks. What is a hook? Hook is the part of the song you remember, right? Like, um, I, I don't want to get the chicken dance in your head, so I'm not going to do that, right? But there's always a hook. There's always a, like the, um, you know, who let the dogs out? Like, that's a hook, right? Everybody remembers it. Everybody says it. You don't know, do you know any of the rest of the words to that song? I don't, right? But you can remember that part. That's a hook. So create some phrase that repeats, that's really memorable and fun. That's your hook. Easy formats are call and response. That way, the students, the children don't have to learn anything. They're literally just repeating after you. And a refrain, like a refrain song is, you know, like you, you give an instruction and you just say, um, this is how we do it. You know, get your things at your cubby. This is how we do it. Da, 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 ba, ba, ba. This is how we do it. And the kids will start to sing with you. This is how we do it. That's your refrain. It happens at the end of each section of instruction, right? So that's a refrain. Rhymes always help. They make things easier to remember and they feel good in our brains. And an easy way to get started creating is writing your own lyrics, just putting your own words 
to a traditional tune that you already know and feel comfortable with. There's tons of them. You can look online for a list of traditional tunes. What that means is they're songs that's called in the public domain, so they're not subject to any copyright issues. You know, You Are My Sunshine, I'm a Little Teapot, um, the ABC song, which is also Baba Black Sheep, and which is also um, something else that I can't remember right now. But there are lots and lots of those types of songs that you already know the melody to, and you can just put your own words to. So get creative with it and have fun. Here's some of my resources. I have six children's mindfulness books. I have six albums of mindfulness and yoga-based movement songs for children. Um, that URL right at the bottom, kirawilly.com slash magic of music. I'm giving you three songs, just be, um, Go Plane Go, which is the one with contrast and the plane and the train and the boat, and the shimmy, which is the spoken word to the beat, giving you those for free. If you want more, I have a, a 15 song, um, like my most loved songs for the classroom playlist. You can head to my site and uh, opt into my mailing list, and I'll give you that, and a bunch of mindful moments too. So. Uh, yeah, there's my new album, Songs for Peaceful Pandas. I think Becker's has a wonderful bundle deal, so please go check out their, their page. Um, but this has a lot of songs for social-emotional learning. This is a companion album to the book, uh, Peaceful Like a Panda. So each exercise, each mindfulness exercise in this book has a song that goes with it on this album. Yeah, I think that's it for me. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. It's it's a jo it's my joy to share this with you, and I hope you've gotten some value oh, from it. I, I had it all. I, <laughs> I teared up. I laughed. I smiled throughout the whole thing. Thank you, Kira. It, it was just fantastic. But folks, don't go away quite yet. You know this is really important to us. I'm just going to quickly put up a poll. It has three quick questions, which really helps us um, so we know, because um, I know we're going to get like tons of positive responses that we know we're going to invite Kira back again. So hang in there. Let me just um, give you a chance to fill out this poll for us. It's anonymous. Three quick questions. And as quickly as we can get responses, uh, we have a couple more slides to share with you, a couple more um, tips of information and news and things you're not going to want to miss. And I know probably your nappers are starting to wake up. <laughs> so <laughs> so we're, we're on borrowed time. And, and, I, and also, if people finish their poll really quickly and think of any questions they want to throw in the Q&A, um, Kira said she'd be happy to, to hang in and answer a few of those questions. If I missed any of my cues, Kira, while you were doing slides, it's because my eyes were closed. And All good. <laughs> I was so mellow. It was a beautiful thing. Okay, a couple more minutes waiting for poll responses would be so helpful for us. second get your responses in now end the poll and let's kind of move on so I uh, just a reminder uh, that as um, Marilyn and Terry have been putting this link in our chat box uh, please go to the link uh, we'd love to see you uh, come to shopbecker.com, see the free resources that Kira so generously gave to us, These those great songs that now can be downloaded. And then also on here will be a link to Kira's site to go ahead and get on her email list and see more things. And we brought in the Songs for Peaceful Panda CD so you, you could get it from us. Um, we have the book, Peaceful Like a Panda. As Kira said, they kind of go beautifully together. And then um, the Mindfulness Moments book sets, just awesome, very popular, great for toddlers.
We always like to share with you uh, the next webinar that's coming up because we know you're not going to want to miss it. So in November, we have uh, Process Art and Literacy. We're bringing back our backyardists, Nicole and Rachel, who do a great job for us. So please put that on your calendar and you can also register for that now on our website. And before we end and um, let's we're going to do quickly take a look at what questions might have come in. I know there was one that came in early on. On Kira. So let me see if I can get that one to you. Uh, somebody asked, I hope I get this right, Terry and Marilyn might be able to help. Um, if the chords to your songs are available, that person I think is a music teacher. Oh, they're not publicly available, but there's if there's a particular one you're interested in, please email me. I'm at Kira at KiraWilly.com. It's Kira, K I R A, at KiraWilly, K I R A W I L L E Y dot com. And I'll be happy to help. That's, yeah. that's beautiful. Yeah. Um, and if somebody wants to invite you to their school, how can they reach you? Yeah, please get in touch. It's Kira Willy. Again, that same email or there's a there is a form on my website, which is kirawilly.com. There's a schools tab um, and we take there's a whole um, input form about me coming to visit your school. I'd love to if I'm able. I love visiting schools. Oh, great. Yeah, please great, get in great. touch. Yeah, that, that and actually the assemblies look amazing. So I can't wait to tell all my teacher friends to, oh, please, to get yeah. on. How far in advance do you get booked out, Kira? Oh, uh, the spring now. But, you know, we, yeah. we fit, fit them in um, if we can. It depends on, you know, travel and all that type of stuff. But yeah. And so you stay fun. pretty local or we I mean, actually is... to California in April. Yeah. <laughs> We've been to Ohio. I'm in eastern Pennsylvania, so right. um, not far from from New York, but. Um, we've gone to Ohio, to Michigan, wow. to all over. Um, oh, we so do, fun. you know, tend to stay more local. It's a little bit easier, but yeah, I love to travel too. That's so fun. Yeah. Uh, any other questions that I missed, um, team? Trying to take a quick look at my, our uh, chat box. I mean, I know many people are. Oh, for some reason, people have, were not able to answer the poll. So we will get hmm. that to you. So sorry. Um, huh, I wonder, how do I complete my evaluation? Huh, so that's, that's odd, I'm not sure. Um, we definitely got a bunch of responses. Um, so we got about 150 responses, so I'm not sure when, what went awry there. Um, hmm. Sorry about that. Um, thank you so much for offering the email option to get chords. Your songs are so beautiful. Thank Our you. voices are so similar. This is from Tracy. Oh, neat. All right. So, yeah, Tracy. so wonderful. Uh, wow. It's just, just it's so many positive comments, uh, and I will definitely share them with Kira because she deserves to hear them and see uh, her, this time was just so well spent, and it's such a gift, Kira, to have you bring this to us. I mean, as I said, I did tear up a bit, like that Just Be song. Um it, it did just what you said. You know, you're not used to hearing that those mel melancholy kind mm -hmm. of sounds. And it really put me in an emotional place. And it was kind of a, a really nice feeling. So good. So, I'm glad music yeah. is so powerful. Uh, I, I, I feel it. So a big thank you from all of us. Um, we will stay on for a few minutes if people want to continue to chat with us. And I'll take my uh, camera off, but we are watching the chat. Feel free to keep uh, connecting with us. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Kira. Oh, Rosa, you wanted to know how to uh, sign up for the for the webinar, just go to shop. Uh, Terry, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, can they go to shopbecker.com? Um, or do we want to send them to the Resource Cafe? Terry might be able to answer that better. Um, Rosa wants to know what's the best way to sign up for the webinar in, in uh, November. It's on the homepage now. Oh, great. Amazing. So shopbecker.com, it's on our homepage. Just click register now. We will have the recording up um, tomorrow. So um, if you were not able to 
to see the full thing. Well, you wouldn't hear me now saying that, but if you're still on and you have colleagues who were not able to catch the full webinar, uh, please encourage them to, to watch the recording. Um, and I will encourage everyone I know to watch the recording because it was just chock full of wonderful things. Okay, Pam, I hear you, we hear you, we hear you. You're saying offer more during rest time hours. And my guess is, Pam, that you are on the East Coast. <laughs> and then you know, my West Coast people might say something different. And we actually even have some global folks. So uh, that's why we try to offer the recordings. But I, I hear you, Pam, and I know this is probably the most valuable time if we can kind of catch nap times across the country. Thanks, Ralph, for letting us know this time slot works well for you. You must be another East Coaster. Oh, um, Nicole wanted Kira to repeat her email. Um, I'm not sure, Terry or Marilyn, if you got that. I, I think Kira, Kira Willie, oh, at, I maybe didn't catch it either. So we might, here it is. Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. Kira at kirawilly.com. Perfect. Kira, K-I-R-A at Kira Willie, W-I-L-L-E-Y.com. Thanks again, everyone. We will stop the recording now. Thank you, Rob. And we look forward to seeing everybody again soon. Have a great